recording. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 10 October 2023. And around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal. I believe Hervé uh, might not be able to join today. Oh, I'm trying. Uh, Mark Waite is here. Stefan Merle. Uh, Bruno is not there. I believe he has a meeting. Bruno is and there now. Kevin. Oh, perfect. Hello, Bruno. OK. Uh, let's start with announcement then. Uh, the weekly release is out. I saw changelog update as well on the Jenkins.io website. I believe everything is uh, ready or already shipped. Correct. Is that correct? So that, well, at least I, I haven't seen it. I haven't checked for the Docker container tag, but the the weekly bits are there. The changelog has been merged. I need to check that the changelog is visible. Do you, has the has the container tag been written had been placed? Yes. Oh, good. Yes, okay. it has been uh, packages, good. container image, and Stefan and I saw the change log uh, on the web page uh, earlier today. So at least the first version of the change log is uh, is online on Jenkins. Are you? Great. So yeah, yay. Do you have other announcements, folks? I don't either. Um. So. Uh, no, announcement. Tomorrow, we will upgrade whatever happens, the uh, operating uh, tomorrow or eventually Thursday, uh, we will upgrade curl as much as possible on the production. <laughs> that might require a lot of upgrades. Uh, that That's something that has been cooked by Hervé, uh, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, the curl author has, court, uh, has, has a cut short release cycle and announce the release tomorrow uh, with a high severity fixed, not only, but at least. And uh, yeah, we will have to wait, of course, that that new curve version is packaged and made available on Ubuntu packages, mostly. Uh, and then we will have to update all container images as much as, much as possible when they run in production. Uh, that's a communication for the leader of the SIG platform. Uh, because uh, we will need to do the same for the official container images, most probably tomorrow. Regarding the Jenkins core, that means we will have to wait next week for the weekly and LTS upgrade. That's one week. I believe it should be okay, but we will have to assess the issue. Because if it's really critical, uh, yeah, we might have to, uh, to find a solution with the security team. I propose that we check with the security team once the assessment is available. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Um, curl. Okay. Upcoming calendar, weekly 2.428 next week, Tuesday the 17th. And the next LTS 2.440.3, 14.3, uh, the next day, the Wednesday 18. Is that okay for everyone? Yes, and thanks to Kevin Martins has submitted the the change log for an upgrade guide for 4.14.3. Thank you, Kevin, very much. And Chris Stern has done the initial merge on 4.14.3's uh, backports. Nice. There may be we depending on this week's uh, the changes that arrive in this week's uh, at weekly. There may be requests to backport additional. I'm not sure. Some of them looked possibly quite interesting. Nice. Thanks for the explanation. Great work, Kevin. Great work, Chris. Thanks for the the huge work there. Um, no security update announced on the mailing list. By the way, for both uh, weekly release next week, uh, as soon as they're available, we try to merge them. Uh, the LTS means that uh, during the Wednesday afternoon after it has been done, 
because usually Chris is based on Azure, if I'm not mistaken, because usually it starts really early with our German colleagues such as Alex. So yeah, it's early time or in during the morning in EU. So I mean, afternoon EU, morning US, we are able to upgrade our controllers. That also mean Mark and Stefan that we might need to take care of upgrading the plugins on CI, Jenkins, IO, and then trusted and certs eventually Monday or most probably Tuesday next week. The goal as usual is to be sure that we have as less change as possible when the weekly release is released. Okay, um, next major event, we will, you will be able to meet uh, Jenkins contributor during the DevOps wall at Santa Clara next week, uh, 18 and 19 October. And if you have a preference for European and the nice Belgium weather, three and four of February, uh, yeah, I mean, which by the way, I'm going to test this Sunday a, a potential venue if we want to have a Jenkins Contributor Summit or any kind of event, more uh, official or not. Uh, that's one hour and a half by car from Brussels, but we can go by train one hour and then 20 minutes with a bus, taxi or car. But trust me, the venue is really nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me spoil uh, what I have in mind. That will be Jenkins event on top of Belgium, because that will be the highest point. There is a there is a big brewery restaurant which is on top of Belgium, <laughs> literally speaking. That or the beer pipeline in 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 uh, Bruges. <laughs> anyway. Let's start with the infrastructure work. So what are the tasks that we were able to finish during that milestone? Um, there has been a GitHub documentation on Sonar plugin issue taken by Hervé. Uh, it was this awful override at the update center level. So that means when we are generating the update center index, there is a a way to control the uh, documentation and source URL that is uh, advertised by the index that you can then see on your uh, Jenkins manage plugin management section and also on the plugin Jenkins IE website. So for everyone, if we have a user, a contributor complaining that they did everything properly on the side on their, on their plugin, they have a markdown on GitHub, they want the plugin Jenkins IO website to show the documentation from their uh, GitHub repository instead of the whole wiki. It means that you have to look on the update center overrides like this issue. It's the second one in one week, I believe. So that's a quick and easy fix. So thanks everyone involved on this one. Um, uh, Maven 39. Five is now generally available to developers and CI Jenkins IU and everywhere. Thanks, Alex, for raising the topic. Um, not much uh, to say about this one. It was already tested uh, at least on the Jenkins core before the request. So our trust is good enough, but maybe it breaks something. We, if you have any issue, don't hesitate to send us an email. We had the Jenkins account issue. In that case, uh, that was uh, marked as spam, probable spam by IP. So the user was a human though. So I've created his email and it worked from my, my, from my IP. I believe this is a, an, an Indian ISP, public IP, which is used a lot. So yeah, uh, no feedback from the person. So I close the issue. Uh, last week, we had an issue with one of our Packer images uh, only on Windows agent that has been fixed with the 1.28.0 version of these images. Uh, the problem was rooted in something failed during the last step of the Windows provisioning, which is what we call sysprep. So we have a script that cleans up any license, computer name, temporary files on Windows to make it available for an image. So then you can start new machine from that template. And that step uh, showed as a success, but Azure when starting virtual machine from that template was reporting it wasn't. So 
we tried a new version of 1.28 that has new changes and it worked. No more problem. They tried everywhere. So close the issue. If I remember correctly, it's 1.28.1. Yep, true. Now 1.29 and soon 1.30. Free minor version. That's nice. Um, also, another uh, login issue treated with the user. Um, I've closed the issue access to GitHub packages in the plugin. This user from Red Hat wanted to access uh, dependency hosted on GitHub packages, which is not possible anonymously, making the build break on CI, Jenkins IO, and contributor laptops, except theirs. Uh, they acknowledged uh, the tip yesterday, so I closed the issue since now they have to test um give us a feedback if it work or not we have at least two other plugins already doing this so that's why i closed the issue and we'll see if they have any more problem but no more action well, for us any question uh, finally great job now all of the replicated service on our public gates cluster production cluster are now running with high availability on forced setup, which means uh, no more two replicas on the same virtual machine and the virtual machine crash or is upgraded, meaning we have a service cut. And also uh, we added not only on T-Affinity, but a way to, when we roll out a new version of this replicated service, we ensure that we always have a replica running at, at any moment. Um, so great job that work on any kind of CPU. Uh, that was a way for us to also discover nice surprises on some of our uh, Elm charts. Uh, for instance, I broke the public backend uh, use for plugin Jenkins IO during at least 10 minutes uh, last Friday, if I'm correct. Uh, uh, because... Uh, oh, we plug in, yeah, yeah. Yep, that was the plugin backend system because it was... Uh, an exotic way of using Kubernetes uh, node selector to say the lists. And it worked for like this for years. So that has been fixed, but yeah. Nice way to clean up and improve the content and quality of our Elm charts, by the way. So that task is definitively closed, uh, unless we missed the service, but looks like it was exhaustive. So now the next step, oh, uh, we that opened the door for going back to migrating services to IRM64. And, and open the door to uh, upgrading Kubernetes 126 because now we won't approve that. We can plan. Good point. Anything else to add on the tasks that were done? Any question, clarification? Oh. None. Okay. So now the work in progress. So we have uh, a lot of work. About the plugin side backend or API, that's the same thing. Um, we had OM kill on the pod detected by Stefan next week. So thanks Stefan for the complete analysis. Uh, the idea is we should, we only have to upgrade the GDK running to a recent Tamarine version, even if it's a GDK 8 because the Ubuntu 22.04 machines we use in production use cgroup version two, which is a way to control the resources allocated to the containers. And the old GDK version used currently on the latest image version is not able to read that. So it was trying to allocate 130 gigabyte of memory and up to 60 CPU. So yes, at the moment Kubernetes was killing it every minute since six months, almost. So thanks uh, Bruno and Stefan for uh, opening the, the worm of CAN because we realized that in fact, plugin site, site API is not building since February. So we had to first fix the build with the help of Hervé, um, fix the build of that so we can, uh, we can then upgrade the GDK 8. That wasn't an easy one. Uh, but yeah, now what's the status? The build is now fixed. Oh, sorry for the upper case. But build is fixed and container image are deployed to Docker Hub. 
So next step for this one to unblock the the the, the next step is to deploy your first version of plugin site API, which which deliver commits from Gavin, me, Hervé, and Stefan since the since October 2022. We have at least one year of changes, if not more. So next step, deliver your version to production. Um, the good point is that we know that Fastly is in front of that system. So that means we will have to check carefully the plugins.origin.jenkins.io uh, URL and test it. And if it's not working, immediately roll back and until a fastly decache. You have generally one hour for that. Blocked by the above. So of course, once we will have upgraded a new version and we know it work as expected, then we will be able to deploy the new, new version with the new GDK. Is there any question, comments, things to add, uh, uh, clarification on the plugin site API? Um, by the way, uh, cooked by Hervé and then confirmed by uh, Gavin, this service should be sunset soon. So there is a pull request in a few months that is only the front end part that will allow us to get rid of the back end part. Uh, there are still some work we need to ask Zbinek and I believe the world documentation team we will need your help to evaluate these changes. I believe maybe the Bruno you and Jean-Marc might be of help here. Uh, as uh, we need to check what is missing and what will happen if we switch immediately to uh, Zbinek and Gavin proposal. But I believe it's a problem of images and absolute URL, so that should be not that much at first sight. It's just a matter of finding someone able to spend the required time on it. Um, Damien, this yeah. is this is still the plugin plugin site API, not the deletion of of uh, the Jenkins.io site. I'm sorry, I'm I'm a little bit lost. Oh, no problem. The plugin the Jenkins.io website. Okay. It's composed of a backend and a front end. Mm -hmm. So you are fastly in front of it that caches everything. But still, we have three components plugin site issues, backend, and front end. That's the backend that we are speaking. It's written in Java, GDK 8 only. And that's the one suffering the OM kill. Uh, we will keep the front end website, which is the, the backend for fastly on plugin Jenkins. So you absolutely will keep this one. Great. I don't Thank know for you. the site issue. I've added a note just to be sure there is no confusion because it's clear on my mind because I had my under T and the rest of the team, but yeah, uh, that's a good question. Any question, clarification? Okay. Uh, we have a user now, next issue. We have a user unable to sign up. Um, their email, I just studied the answer one hour ago. The email is considered as a source of spam. So the message on Datadog logs uh, with their email say no, uh, it must, must probably email a blacklisted domain. So uh, I've, I've added a message for them saying you have to try another email. Uh, I'm not sure how much is it acceptable because that can be frustrating for the user. But if we, yeah. I'm not sure we want to suffer uh, tons of spam on the system, so that's why. So we'll wait for a feedback from them, and next week, if we don't have any answer, we close the issue after one milestone. Okay for you? Thing for user answer about changing their email. Um, Stefan, Jira email status from SendGrid. I believe we you didn't have time to work on it. No, I'm sorry, Daniel, if you're watching. Uh, do you want to plan working on it or do you want to move it to backlog? I will, I will move it to backlog, got too much to do. 
Nice, man, on it. Back to backlog. Um, Packer goes version tracking and moving sanity check to goes. What's the status for you, Stefan? What I think was a, a good move that we did uh, what an hour ago, just crashed. Mm -hmm. So no, so still no uh, real usage. Um, we try to move all the sanity check that we're doing on the process of, of uh, uh, provisioning from the script, shell script to uh, GOS, like that, that will be more um, portable and valuable. But for now, I got problem with the user running those tests and, and especially the path used to run those tests. And uh, I thought we, we found that the solution, but it seems not still need to work on it and for now i i started to move uh as their version test and the uh, npm version test but uh for now it's useless okay thanks for the report do we keep it on the milestone next yes week, given your that's... workload okay yes that's the the back uh mind uh, how you call that touch the phone it's minor task minor. background task thank you okay any question clarification on that topic okay so the next topic migrate terraform state from aws s3 to azure buckets uh, so i've started uh, preparing the code for creating the new azure buckets but i haven't applied on the changes and created, so that will be next step. I was traveling, so I wasn't really keen on trying to manipulate Terraform state from my machine on a on a running train on 4G cellular network, right? So, got ready, need to apply creation of new buckets Azure. So I'm keeping this one um, uh, for the milestone, uh, I will be able to. Uh, uh, I will be able to work on it. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions on this one. No. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark, do you have any news about Oracle Cloud Project and tools? Yes, the news is no news. I'll double check <laughs> while we're here, but. The, they we still can't pay them the last three invoices because they still show zero dollars due. Okay. Um, by the way, everything has been cleaned up on Azure, uh, the whole uh, SSO. So I propose that we close that issue here and you will comment when you will have news. Is that okay for you, Mark? Yes, absolutely. As no more action required except waiting for Oracle. Thanks. So I will move this one on the close, close the issue on the notes. Here we are. Any question about Oracle points clarification? Okay. Next step, Stefan, speed up the Docker image library to create push tags at the same time, blah, blah, blah. What's the status? And do you plan uh, to work on it? Yes, I plan to work on it. So keep it on the for next week. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we did already prepare people request to uh, disable the the tag uh, building automatic build uh, for one repository, which is the wiki um, confluence data. For me to try the new version of the pipeline li shared pipeline library that will do everything in one row meaning that the the build on on main will uh, uh, deploy latest and the, the the tag and will push the tag and everything will be done in one row one turn we we started next step um write down unit test yes tdd on the library to describe the new expectations 
of the new pipeline. Is that okay? Yes, exactly. Pipeline, if I can write properly, okay. I think that's all, so that's already a lot. Yeah. Thanks. So we keep it on the upcoming milestone. Is there any clarification point, things to add on that topic? No? Okay, next topic. Remove account request field from Jira login pages. I didn't have time to work on it. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I think a back to backlog. I don't have time to spend on this one and it's on Jira. So if any Jira admin is okay. Um, I will ping uh, Daniel, Mark and Tim on a message saying, I don't have time and I don't know how to do it. Uh, I need help from another administrator and then I will move it back to backlog. Unless someone object. After pinging other Jira admins. Okay. Next topic uh, we have on the list upgrade to Kubernetes 1.26. Uh, Stefan, I believe you worked on it. What's the status on yes. this one? So I did the first little tap, step, which is uh, uh, changing the update CLI manifest for. Uh, um, kubectl exec type uh, from the client side so now we got a pull request um, dealing with the upgrade and I think we did yes we did merge so we should yes. have the new kubectl uh, client side uh, working and up, up to date Asha is now enforced on all replicated services so next step is reading changelog and preparing digital ocean upgrade. Need a timeline. I don't know who is interested in doing that. By default, I volunteer. But if anyone is interested to either pair or drive the topic, uh, no. I would like to pair. I think Hervé said something, no, Hervé? The same as you. You want to, to pair on this one? Not um, pairing uh, uh, obligatory, but yeah, I that, can work with you on that. That, that. That's a production system. We need to pair on this one to make it safe. Okay. So you can, both of you can pair. I let you decide or can pair with me, or we can be the three of us. Um, given the calendar, I propose that we accept reading changelog. We don't plan anything until after the next LTS. Is that okay for everyone? Yep. Let's plan for after the LTS. We can start change log and prepare do PL. Okay for everyone. Cool. So I'm Perfect. I'm moving I'm adding it to the milestone this week, but only for the change log uh, and preparation part. Is that okay? Uh, Stefan, a word about RM64. What's the status? Yes, I did plan? prepare for a rating to uh, migrate to RM64, but then discovered that uh, rating needed an upgrade. Let me think, forgot why. Uh, oh, yes, it, was, it wasn't uh, uh, building correctly on, mass, on main and needed uh, to be upgraded. So I did prepare a fix. Uh, it's done and need to be deployed and then I will be able to merge the other pull request that dealing with the IRM64. Also explain the bug you found on rating Jenkins IO. No, uh, I, no, didn't, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I found the bug but you found the solution of the bug. Uh, in fact, we push, have... Uh, a fix with the SQL query with a transaction to to patch the base, database, database. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the beginning, Hervé. Yeah. I push a fix. 
you change the size the of a field in the in the SQL directly? Not in the, no, you look at the pull request. Okay. I've updated the init uh, SQL schema, and I wrote the SQL query with the transaction needed to be applied to the database to increase the length of the water field. Yeah, we need to with be careful backup with before, that because with a backup before. It can be uh, it can be huge. Yep. Okay. So yes, we we discovered that uh, it's not compliant with IPv6, but only IPv4 because the field is too small. It's thirty uh, um, characters, and we need more. Thank you. Uh, the fix. Thanks. The fix in itself, I don't think uh, uh, that's the problem. It's more we need to plan and verify that it work on a copy of the database first, and then and see what happens. So no need for a full copy, but at least a copy with uh, 10 or 20 records. And, uh, and then and we, we try to, be, to change. We need to be prepared for, for uh, an interruption because if the table is huge and if there's index and everything, it can it can. We will have an, uh, an interruption on this one. We yeah, don't have to be smart. It's not critical data one. anyway, so. Yeah. OK. Yes, but still. <laughs> Yeah, it was down for how long and can remember how long, but yeah. Yes, but the, like data we, if we... the data wasn't lost. Um, if we start trying small things, we need to improve ourselves as a team when we are running production operations, the three of us. It, it, it wasn't off, it was working for IPv4. Mm, rating was down for some time. Okay, didn't know that. That's not an argument for not planning a proper yeah, sure, production sure, sure. operation. I, just saying it's I don't. Not I don't. Okay. Data, uh, and I think that it has already been done. It was in response to Stefan, not your uh, attention okay. to the production operation. So I propose uh, same to postpone this one to after the LTS. Is that okay for you? Or is someone motivated to plan an operation this week? OK, for after this. Thanks. Um, so you're working on rating Jenkins to move to RM64. Is that correct? Oh yes, but I will I will pick a new one for the 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 week coming. I don't know which one yet. Is the uh, ingress controller, but the oh, private yeah. one. Yeah. So we can I start a, a first set. If it breaks, it only breaks our usage internally, and if it doesn't, then if it works, then we can plan the public one after. Yes. Is that okay for everyone else? Uh, private Nginx, yeah, uh, ingress controllers. Okay, that will be enough for RM64, I believe. Oh, we mentioned, no, oh, yeah, we'll see later. Uh, sorry, I was diverging. Next point, Matomo, um, as discussed during a team sync, uh, I believe that the argument presented by Hervé makes sense. Matomo needs to be prioritized, not as much as update Jenkins IO, but still. So that's why we spend some time working on it because yeah, we are we don't have statistics on the website since July. Is that correct, Hervé? Uh, since the end of July, yes. Yes. So because of the Google Analytics version four, that is, we are struggling to uh, upgrade. So Three the goal points, is to yeah. move as possible, as soon as possible to Matomo. Sorry, you were saying? Nothing in particular, just that we can't update to the fourth version of uh, Google Analytics as we don't have the required level of permission. To, we can't upgrade. No, that's since end of July. Um, prioritized. 
Makes sense. Thanks for uh, pushing on that topic. Status. Uh, we had a, data, a database instance, but uh, we didn't have a database inside the instance. So that's the work in progress. Adding a Matomo database with its own user. Uh, pull request was added, but failed to apply on production once merged. Looks like the, the instance user administrator is not allowed to log in outside localhost. So I'm searching how to open it from just a few IPs or just from a few endpoints links. I believe it's around the private endpoints. We had the same with PostgreSQL. So uh, that will just uh, digging archives and how did we solve the problem back in time. Uh, I can reproduce the issue by trying to log in from the private VPN machine, which is used. When you want to run Azure Terraform from your machine, you need to open a tunnel through the VPN. Uh, that's an improvement for later, but I can reproduce the issue from the VPN machine, which will be easy to test before running again Terraform. Um, we have also um, the Elm chart. So I've taken and refreshed the work from Gavin, which tried to install a few months ago the Bitnami Matomo Elm charts that allows to spin up Elm charts. So right now the goal is to insert the credential um, and the ARM64 image has been uh, pushed on it. So the next step for me will be to try a first install on a local cluster. And if it's the case, and if there is no objection, I plan this week to run the first installation outside the configuration as code, but without an ingress. So it won't be available publicly. My test will only be with a kubectl port forward to the internal private service. And as soon as I have something that looks like it's working, then I will delete the whole namespace to clean up the resources. And I will submit a pull request for you to review a, a version that had been tested once. Does it make sense? And is there any objection or agreement on this one? That's a good move, yes. Hervé, does it map to the problem you had when uh, bootstrapping the update Jenkins IO uh, Elm chart? Uh, sorry, I've missed the last sentence before. No, no problem. Uh, um, my proposal about uh, trying to create a first installation manually without the, the as code, but without the ingress and testing only port forwards, I want to map what you did with the update Jenkins IO service yeah. without the ingress. Does it make sense for you? I don't see the direct link between updates to Jenkins that I own this chart, but uh, what during your first that? install of the chart, there there has been one week with during which you opened draft pull request with the code, but you were applying the code on your machine. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yep. Okay, to be tested without ingress public access at first. Cool. So that will be the next move to start uh, Matomo as soon as possible. Um, remove Jenkins IO pages are, aren't accessible. So the last step is to find a way to delete the old e pages on Jenkins IO that are not generated properly. Uh, I believe we didn't have time to spend on this one. Is that correct? I haven't worked on that, and we need to have some people working on setting the page to before adding the delete flag. So, okay. I'm sure if, if Kevin or Mark are still there, I believe you were involved. Okay, so we, I'm adding a note. We need a. Uh, um, help from the docs team to check the page to be deleted. Is that, did I capture it well, Hervé? Yeah. Should I add it to the backlog? I think we should remove it from our milestone while uh, this, check has, this check hasn't been done. The checks are done. Okay. Thanks. Um, 
Planning for supported GDK version in GDK infrastructure. I've added that one back to the milestone since Stefan started uh, to remove GDK 19 uh, from Packer image. Uh, removal uh, from Packer image. That's, uh, that will be the release one that whip to be deployed on CI Jenkins IO. So we have the pull request, Stefan, that will be the next step, but we have to do it carefully. Uh, yeah, not during the weekly release, so most probably tomorrow. Um, next step will be Jenkins tool and Docker inbound agent, Windows container images for the infra. Uh, I saw a message about GDK 21. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally available uh, from a few minutes ago. When you say available, does it imply oh. <laughs> every bit of deliverable or just uh, Intel on the website? Yeah, not everything is available yet. You won't find it for just every platform available on Earth. So yes, it's not for today. The first ones are available, but I think we will have to wait one or two days before everything is available for everything. Every just checked during the meeting and for example, we don't have the Docker images yet. So yeah, we could install some things on the infra, but um, it's urgent to wait, I guess. I mean, if we have the, the platform we need, that's not a problem. So yes, yeah, just R64 and um, AMD64, I think they're available. So why not? And they're already providing some JDK22 builds, by the way. So <laughs> after cleaning uh, the JDK19, we could dirty everything with oh. JDK22. <laughs> nope. The first step okay, will, be, <laughs> will be, yeah. it's not LTS, so it doesn't no, exist. Like uh, uh, it's the same thing as not GS20, it won't exist until it's the new LTS soon. Okay, yeah. but 19 okay. wasn't LTS either. Yep. Right to the debate, uh, there wasn't even one plugin using the HDK uh, 19. So, yep, I don't think it was time to put that in place and to remove it later. Uh, right infrastructure GDK supports timeline. Uh, because before trying to jump on non LTS version, we need to, to say, what do we want to provide to our users and support? The problem is not installing GDK 22. The problem is to support and have a way to help user when you need to remove it. As they say, GDK 19, we didn't find, find any uh, usage. So yeah, what about next edge version such as GDK 22? GDK LTS supports and of life, etc. We need to write a document and then send that document to the developer to be sure no one has a strong opinion against it before we remove it. I'm still not sure about the process Do we need to to play the benevolent dictators uh, in the sense that we are the person in charge of maintaining and providing security in the infra. And but the cost. I, I would provide, provide the existing mailing list thread and, and, uh, and uh, notice that there wasn't any usage and propose that we give up about that and see uh, if there are any reaction. The, the goal is not only GDK19, the goal is about the general support policy that we want to have on infrastructure. That means yeah. for the LTS channel and the non-LTS channel, do we support it, yes or no? And if we do, for how much time? What is the timeline? So the goal is to be deterministic for the end users. Yeah, if, we That's skip, the... if, we, if we keep like the early available for the LTS, or if we also use the intermediate ones and everything. And we need to bring to their attention the, the, the possible cost, because if we provide a new uh, Java version and they had that to test, that means that we will have 
a lot more agent running. Yep. True that. Thanks, folks. That's yeah, that will be a not easy topic. But yeah, at least we can continue on the GDK 19. Hervé, is that okay for you if we start writing a yeah. first proposal draft and then we revive that topic inside the, the mailing list? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, finally, last topic I have there, unless you have a question. Nope. Update Jenkins IO. Hervé, your turn. That's the big, the big issue, but we treat it as the last. Sorry. So can you give us a status? We've lost Hervé. Okay, so I will, uh, uh, we shared a bit of work, so I will share my, my parts. If Hervé comes back, he will share, otherwise I will try to oh speak God. on his behalf. No problem. Are you okay to share the status on update Jenkins I on your side? Yeah, sure. Um, yep. So, your side is in chat, so I'll let you talk about yep. that. We'll on my side, uh, we've got uh, every needed uh, tools. Sorry, two seconds. Uh, tools installed on the trusted agent, permanent agent, uh, which are AWS CLI and AZ copy. The first one uh, to be able to sync. Uh, there are two Cloudflare buckets, and the second one to synchronize the Azure uh, file share uh, we are using as reference for your orbits. Mm. I've got also the credential, the credential for um, AWS uh, uh, stored as a non-default profile. So when you execute uh, the AWS CLI command, you have to specify as a profile, and it doesn't work by default on this, with these credentials. For the AZ copy uh, credential, we have we have we have to use um, uh, SAS token, which is uh, more secure than Blobxfer uh, used elsewhere which is using a primary key, so more fine uh, token. Um, I wanted uh, first to use, uh, to pass it as code uh, by storing it in a file, an environment file and sourcing it, but it doesn't work. I can't uh, bind it as a secret in the freestyle trusted job. So I will do like the other credential used by the update center jobs on trusted, which is store, um, register them, stores, um, create them manually on trusted controller, then specifying them, uh, binding them to the job, uh, freestyle job manually. Uh, the first I've pushed uh, pull request updating uh, the Publish scripts used by the center to also upload and synchronize the file share and the R2 buckets, but uh, it's failing, and I'm currently working on the beginning why it's failing, as local tests are not failing. In a copy of the job. Okay works locally so i'm not there when that will be working uh, we'll be able to test uh, this uh, new update center web uh, site with local and distant uh, jenkins instance mm -hmm. and finally we'll be able to Remove the uh, initial part of the script, publish script, to, um, to drop the update center virtual machine updates and keep only the new one, new service, which is uh, hosted on the public KAS cluster. Nice. 
Um, just a note. Performance. So that will be the challenge once we have a way to validate functionally that we can copy data. Um, as a reminder from Daniel initially, that job needs to run in less than three minutes, which includes the copy to the job to update center that will be removed in the future, as Hervé mentioned. It's an air sync, but also the copy to the Azure bucket and the S3. So we will have to find smart way to parallelize these copies uh, with background processes or using new parallel or shell uh, tedious techniques, but we will need a way to run the copy on simultaneously. Uh, have you got the confirmation from Daniel that it must be under three minutes or is it the current I haven't, time? I, have, I haven't asked, you can ask him. Yeah, I'll wait until we've got uh, something working before. Okay, I don't want to, to challenge. Uh, I don't want to challenge that thing. I want us to provide something optimized. That's why I'm not asking him. If you want to challenge the three minute, that's okay. But you have to find the reason. Uh, yeah, sure. on Daniel. That's why I won't ask him yet. Perfect. Thanks. Or not all three minutes. <laughs> I mean, when you have a problem, uh, a problem like this, either you increase the time that you you can afford spending on it, or you optimize. That's the two obvious paths. So that's okay to take another pass if it's not a problem. Cool, nice job. That's a lot of work. So almost there. We are on the debugging part. Uh, on my side, on the Elm charts. So. First, the new Elm chart is deployed. Uh, the new Elm chart features um, what we call umbrella PVC and ingress. So that's the parent chart that defines once for all the storage and the ingress, and then all the sub chart, AirSync, uh, which is not used. No, it is used. Uh, the AirSync for the scan. The HTTPD server and mirror bits will use this PVC or ingress, depending on, on this. Um, yes, great news. It broke the mirror bit system. Yeah. <laughs> but breaks the mirror bits. So as we mentioned during our private team sync, um, right now, uh, if we need to test the new service, uh, one survey is finished, we will have to disable uh, Disable HTTP as a as an ingress backend temporarily. As an ingress backend, um, uh, related to uh, no no. The problem is somehow uh, path with regex and nginx locations. Um, yeah. Do you you know the adage? You have. Uh, you have a problem, you had a regex or a pattern, and then you have two problems. That's literally Long the regex. point. Uh, what is happening is all requests are cooked and sent to HTTPD, even if we specify uh, something else. So either we are specifying, specifying it in the wrong way, but I mean, Hervé did everything properly since the beginning from an existing status that work as expected. So it's not obvious what did we miss. Uh, maybe I broke something which is, will be obvious at the second thing, but right now I didn't. Yeah, I don't understand. The configuration on Nginx looks good and should do what it's told to do. Yeah. So that's the status right now. And I also have a whip, but I've blocked that whip uh, on templatizing the mirror bits configuration. Um, I started working on it because. Um, uh, Hervé was in need of enabling the download logs of mirror bits, which are really verbose logs. So we avoid sending them to the STD out. Uh, and finally, so Hervé successfully fixed the problem and found the, the issue. So that problem is not priority. That's why I've deferred it. Uh, but still, we have a lot of duplicated configuration between the month pass and do we want to enable logs or GOIP or whatever parameters on the .conf file. So the goal is now to avoid having it everything on the secrets and have a template that generated from values on the chart. That will be easier, but that one is not priority now. 
Is that assessment okay for you, Hervé, or uh, did I forget something? No. Cool. So, yeah. That's all on the M chart. The priority is fixing that ingress annoyance. So, yeah, that's all for this topic. Do you have new topics? Okay, let's have a look on new issue eventually. Um, I need to add to the milestone, to the next milestone, that issue that I've moved from plugin API. That's me who broke the plugin backend website and I've moved it here uh, so I can provide a post-mortem of what went wrong, what, what are the fixes before closing it. The incident is uh, fixed since one week, since four days. Uh, I don't see any new issues though. Do you have other topics to add? Okay, so then let's see each other next week. Bye-bye. I'm stopping screen shares, stopping recording. And good week.